is holding up well against the variants. It's efficacy slightly dipping to 93%. Both the CDC and the FDA have said boosters are not yet necessary. Are you surprised to hear them say that so far? I actually don't disagree in the sense that not yet. This is the CEO of Moderna. Listen to what he says. You're going to be enlightened. Got to wait for it to catch up. One second, y'all. Is right now. And the data we have to date is that the 1273R vaccine is holding up well against the variants of concern, including Delta. Mm -hmm. But we just don't know how long that will last. With nearly 140 million doses of its two-shot regimen administered in the U.S., Moderna says research is underway to see if boosters between the three companies offering vaccines can be mixed and matched. The Delta variant proving to be a game changer. I think we're pretty worried now. Um, if you look at the Delta variant... He says they are pretty worried <clears throat> now. I want you to pay attention to what this young man is about to say. This was just reported on the nightly news a couple of days ago. One second. It took a surprising step. I don't think any of us three, four months ago were going to predict something that was this many times more infectious. Delta. Wait, three or four months ago? Anybody remember India? What happened to India? We're hearing reports in, from India every five minutes. I mean, there were so many reports from India that some of the people from the United States who were reporters literally were living in India because they were reporting so much from India. No more India. Looks like India has, has been erased from history. Hmm, wonder why. Is moving the matrix in a dangerous direction with new cases spiking in 40 states, deaths, infections, and hospitalizations are up roughly 40%. As the Delta variant becomes more prolific, how do your boosters address that variant? One of the most important things we need to do is actually bring the Delta variant into the vaccine. And that way we're teaching the. Whoa, 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 whoa. Did you hear what he just said? He says we need to bring the Delta variant <clears throat> into the vaccine. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to pay attention. What's in the vaccine now? We already know that the so-called COVID virus is not part of the vaccine. Neither with Johnson & Johnson, Pfizer, or Moderna is the COVID vaccine containing COVID. It's an RNA concoction not a vaccine but I want you to understand if you realize how it's been introduced into the public it's been introduced under emergency provisions under emergency provisions pay attention under emergency provisions of the emergency act go ahead go back to the trading with the enemies act that's the emergencies act ladies and gentlemen they created another Emergencies Act. It's called the National Emergency Act in 1976, but the original is the Trading with the Enemies Act. The National Emergency Act of 1976 was designed to put some curtailing on the executive power because they thought they gave them too much power. But I want you to listen to this again. Actually bring the Delta variant into the vaccine. And that way we're... Hold on. They're going to bring the Delta variant into the vaccine. But I thought that the vaccine was effective. If you go back to other interviews, it says, and even the same interview earlier, he said that it was effective against the Delta variant. You keep hearing that the people who are getting the Delta variant are the unvaccinated. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if only the unvaccinated is getting the Delta variant, then why do they need to put the Delta variant into the vaccine? Let me see if I can ask that question again, because some people may not be understanding. If you talk and listen to the media over the last eight weeks, you need to get vaccinated to protect yourself from the Delta variant. Now, if you need to get vaccinated to protect yourself from the Delta variant, Actually, bringing the Delta variant into the... 
then how can you be protected from the Delta variant if they have to bring it into the vaccine? And it's not there. I apologize. Whew. I I'm sorry, nobody caught this when he gave this interview? Because I did. While I was listening to it, it just didn't make any sense. Wait a minute. You're saying that the vaccine works, but it only has a six-month shelf life. Six months? Six-month shelf life. So you're going to need a booster. Oh, I get to sit in one of those seats. No, you're going to just need a booster. That's all. Come on, giddy up. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, impossible, 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 impossible. Oh, by the way, I've been doing some research. We're going to let this doctor go body by. Okay, because we, we don't need to. Oh, he's not even a doctor. He, he is a CEO. Okay, and he's not the very brightest of all CEOs. His interest is, I'm lying to you. Take a look. He literally is telling you, I am lying. Go ahead. Have anybody who knows how to read signs into people to determine whether or not they're telling the truth by their expressions. And note the expression, I am not telling the truth. I am trying to convince you. There's effort. That's why the face is the way you see it. Why? The vaccine. And that way we're teaching the immune system what the delta variant now do you see he said they're teaching the immune looks system looks like in our vaccine just as we did with the prior prior variants in the virus Wait, hold on. soon children not that they actually included the prior variants in the virus but not the, into the vaccine. virus and that way we're teaching the immune system what the delta variant looks like in our vaccine just as we did with the prior prior variants in the virus uh -huh. so you see how children he, not now many people will say well that's just a mistake everybody makes a mistake on words that you know they misspeak no he didn't again when you're trying to mislead people you're trying to watch wording and you're trying not to say certain things so that people can't construe it a certain way his, what he's saying is a speech that he had been working on that day. Before he does an interview, the questions that he's going to be asked, they have to present him the questions in advance. They agree that certain questions can be asked, and they agree that certain questions will not be permitted. That's how they get interviews with CEOs. They have a team who flags any questions that they don't want to answer. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I need to show you what we've been working on. Someone sent me a video of a young lady, and let's see if I can do, let's see if we can do it real quick. Uh, show you her video, and I'm going to suggest some of you go to her website and take a look. Uh, Y-O-U-T-U-B-E dot com. Okay, I'm hoping her video will pull up this way. Because if not, I'll have to pause y'all. Let me pause y'all so we don't waste no time. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is the link for the video. I'm not going to give you the link. All you got to do is look at the title when it comes up, and then you go straight there. Uh, when someone sent me this, I took a look at it. I listened to uh, three-fourths of the video because I had to shut down the computer, so I couldn't listen to the rest of it. However, they were talking about, let's show you the title. Um, it's an hour and four minutes long, but it's one of those live stream videos. And so there are comments along the side here. And as the person was doing the video, she ordered her moderators to not allow certain comments to come in. To, if people said certain things, to go ahead and just delete the comments. Now, I, I, in part, I agree with her, but in other parts, I don't agree with her. Why? Because some of those comments were legitimate comments when they were talking about the Nuremberg Code. And that's what this video focuses on. The Nuremberg Code. Let me show you something about the Nuremberg Code. She's going to be speaking up in a moment. So let me show you something. Let me show you something! Okay. We're going to deal with the Nuremberg Code. And so the first thing you must do when dealing with the Nuremberg Code. And here is the Nuremberg Code right here. Here's the actual code. I've already copied and pasted it. This was, notice this. This was trials of war. Criminals before Nuremberg Military Tribunal under Control Council, Law Number 10, Volume 2, page 181 through 182, Washington, D.C., United States Government Printing Office, GPO, 1949. 
Now, because these laws deal with whether or not a government can force you to participate in experimentation when it comes to medical, it also talks about other things besides medical. Okay, you just got to pay attention. Got to pay attention to the wording. There are only 10 of them, y'all. 10. So, Nuremberg Code is what it's called. But if you do your research, you'll find that the United States claims that they are not under the Nuremberg Code. Now, notice Nuremberg, that code is a treaty. So notice what Justice Black had to say, or Justice Marshall, sorry. <laughs> Justice Marshall, they're good. Hey, they're good. He wrote in, oh, this ain't, this is that Marshall. This ain't Justice Marshall, Marshall. This is, I thought it was they're good Marshall, but this is the other Marshall. I don't know what that Marshall's first name is. I just know they were two Marshalls. Pay attention, a treaty is, in its nature, a contract. A treaty is, in its nature, a contract between two nations not a legislative act and does not generally affect of itself the object to be accomplished especially so far as the operations of infraterritorial and, but is carried to execution by the sovereign power in respects to the parties of the instrument ladies and gentlemen let me let me let me let y'all know about this nuremberg doctrine because it's very important that you understand this there's a Dr. Francis Boyle. He is of the University of Illinois, College of Law. He helped Congress. Hey, Congress, y'all need some help? And they said, you know what, uh, Mr. Francis, get on over here because we need some help. And he says, all right, now I'm going to write y'all something because y'all need, need my help. And I'm a professor at law, so that means I'm a lawyer. I'm a learned student of law, so I'm going to write something up and y'all just going to make a law out of it, okay? Oh, man, you know we ain't can't do nothing without you. Boyle, we got you. Just send it to us, and we'll just sign off on it without no problem. So, ladies and gentlemen, he wrote a document known as the Bioterrorism Act. See? Bioterrorism. Biological warfare. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, when he wrote the Bioterrorism Act... He included the Nuremberg Code. Okay? When he included sections of the Nuremberg Code, and he helped Congress to put together the Bioterrorism Act, this means, oh, I didn't know we had one of them. That's just a blank window. This means that when he did that, the United States accepted the Nuremberg code now when you do research especially if you go to wikipedia you'll find that the united states is said to not be bound under the nuremberg code that's a lie and the reason why it's a lie is because of one fact pay attention to the fact because of the fact that the united states has implemented and incorporated the code into an act of course the united states is bound by it because it has made it law. Notice the Bioterrorism Act. There you go. Nuremberg Code. Now this is the YouTube site that talks about how it's not binding and blah. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, but with the Bioterrorism Act, it now becomes binding. President George W. Bush signed it into law after... September 11, 2001, Congress recognized the needs to enhance security in the United States and passed the Public Health Security Bioterrorism Preparedness and Response Act of 2002. The act, signed by George W. Bush, into law on June 12, 2002. Ladies and gentlemen, we don't care about Title III of the act. You know what we care about? We care about the fact that the United States recommendize this act recommendize the Nuremberg hold on yeah it the, the word Nuremberg is not in here uh, I put medical biologic medical devices cosmetics veterinary products 
is even more crucial today than blah 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 that's one of full time so let's see what else it says medical devices that's full that's full time so we don't need medical devices let's do experimentation nope can't do experimentation so I haven't gone through this like I said I was doing the research and oh you know what this is the FDA. The FDA is focusing on that, so they're not going to talk about the whole act. So I downloaded the act. Okay? I downloaded the act. What I'm trying to tell you guys, if you read the Bioterrorism Act, the Bioterrorism Act, her video still hasn't pulled up. Let's do a refresh. And I'm going to pause y'all important message this is the title of the video this is a very important message today and I would like everyone to share this video as you come and hit the like button one for being here I wasn't gonna do a live stream today but it, um, it warrants it today so as you come in, hit the like button. Okay. The video, as you come in. This is all she talks about. Is this information right here. What I've done is to make sure that the information that's being published, the information that she's discussing, is the actual information. Let's, uh, no, we don't want to get rid of that. I need that. Okay. It's the actual information, a validation. That's why I need that. It's because of that right there gives me an ability to download and if I want to uh, so I verified the information like I said to prove that this is still valid associate the bioterrorism act with it and there you go you'll show that the United States does recognize the Nuremberg code all right ladies and gentlemen that's information I hope it'll be helpful viruses Nuremberg and your rights what this video is gonna be called okay gotta go have a good day